right, we're off. We're on our trip to South Carolina. We've been planning this for over a year probably. Uh, we've got some family there to visit and we also want to see some of our family history. The Breakers lived there in the 1700s and many years ago I got to see some of, of that, but hopefully on this trip we'll get to see a lot more. So this is our trip to South Carolina and then afterwards we get to go to St. Augustine for a few days, spend time with some family. <laughs> So this is the beginning of our trip and we're looking forward to it. Can't wait to see South Carolina. All right. I'm here in front of the First Baptist Church of Columbia, South Carolina. This is the church that my third great-grandfather pastor from 1850-something to 1865. And while he was pastor here in the Civil War, uh, he had a magazine called the Confederate Baptist. Uh, this is a church that thankfully was not burned down during the Civil War, and so it's still here to see. I came here years ago to try to see the place and the doors were locked, so we figured, well, we'll come on Sunday and go check it out. So if you would have pastored here, you can walk right through and help yourself. He stole the show, man. <laughs> but we're going to go check it out because I always wanted to see what the inside looks like. And what's really cool is before the Civil War started, uh, they were looking for a place to meet to discuss secession. And this is the church that they met to talk about seceding from the Union. And South Carolina was one of the first, was the first to secede from the Union. So let's go check it out. So we're here in front of the First Baptist Church where my third great-grandfather was pastor from 1859 to 1865. He pastored here during the Civil War. So this has been designated a national landmark, but look at what date, 1974, the year I was born. What's the odds of that? It was a national landmark. So that was cool. Uh, enjoyed looking. I really like these columns. Wouldn't you like to have some columns like that? Really pretty. Hopefully we get to see the library. We're gonna try for that in a little bit. Okay. Wow, look up there at the new building. Can you see it? And we're going inside, and this looks like a super old sign. I don't know how old this is, but I bet you that's probably 100 years old. Strangers welcome seats free. Oh, at least they don't charge you. And look at this, honey. Turn around and look at these columns. How beautiful they are made out of brick. So this place was built in 1859, and I think that's when he was pastor here. So he would have helped build this place. Let's see, you ready? These are built for giants, these doors. All right, let's go inside. Okay, we've just come in the two giant doors. Doors that are big enough for Goliath. And look at the old, beautiful old lock. And this is actually marble, this list right here. But we've just come in the door. Now, what we want you to do is go back in time. Oh, come on through, come on through. Thank you. <laughs> So let's go back in time to 1850s. And the 1850s is a ter terminalist, uh, what is the word? A, t a tumultuous time in America. Because people in the South are like, oh no, what if someone gets elected as president and he tries to tax us? So fast forward to 1859, 1860, somebody named Abraham Lincoln gets elected. And he wants to do what's called the moral tariff, take up to 48% of the income of the people in the South. So right here, the people in Columbia, South Carolina said, we've got to get together and we've got to discuss succeeding from the Union, succeeding, secession. And they said, let's, let's go to the capital of Columbia. But the capital was being worked on and no one was allowed inside, they were redoing it. So they said, what's the next biggest place where we can all meet together because we want to leave the Union because we don't like Lincoln, he's trying to tax us to death. And they said, oh, Chicken Man Licanti, Breakers Church, that First Baptist Church. Well, let's all meet there and talk about secession. So you come here, imagine it's 1860 and you're mad as heck. 
and you say, let's come in here. And you all meet all the southern gentlemen, and they met here, and they sat down here, and they talked about, let's secede from the Union. Okay, this is inside of the church building. Look at all the seats. So they would have met here in 1860 to discuss seceding from the Union because the evil Lincoln was elected and he wanted to tax them to death with the moral tariff. So this is where everyone would have met. And this is where my pastor, my third great grandfather, he said the opening prayer. And that's kind of a cool history. Let's go look at the pulpit real quick. They separated the white people and the black people and the black people would sit in the balcony so all this was the balcony and it said that he preached more to black people than white people and so when he was a preacher he had a lot of black people coming to church he really cared about black people and wanted them to come to church too but they would have sat up on top Outside, the sign said seats are free because in the old days in the 16 and 1700s you had to pay for where you sit and every family would pay every week or every month and they would actually own that seat where they sat so that's kind of a weird thing so seats are free yeah you don't have to pay to come to this church so wow it's really pretty look at the chandelier I'm stand right here honey so imagine during the whole Civil War, he would preach a message here every Sunday, probably every Wednesday. And then as soon as the Union soldiers came in, he packed up and said, it's time to get out of here. And he put GTT on his door, which means gone to Texas. And a lot of people in the South, when the South was burned down by the evil Yankees, why? They said, well, the only left place to go that's free is Texas, so we're going to Texas. And he went to Texas. And that's where my grandpa and his grandpa and my dad were born, Texas. So from South Carolina to Texas. All right, this is cool. We're going to go see if we can find some more information too. Okay? Okay, so we're kind of walking around just to see where we can go. And uh, this is neat. Look at this little door. This is behind the pulpit. So I think this little door is under the pulpit, and I guess this is storage, and I can't even get it to open. Let's see, can I get it open? No. But anyway, the pulpit would have been up at the top of there, actually the choir. But you can see they've had to do a lot of work when a building's this old. Look at all the holes in the wall. wonder if there's any Civil War stuff in here. Huh, should we go down this scary hall and see what's in here? This must be some sort of a waiting room. So we're in the back of the church, back behind where the pulpit would have been, probably locked. And uh, I think I want to go up into the balcony. What do you say? Let's go that way next, up into the balcony. Here's the main floor plan. So we're actually right, it says deacons. So this must have been the deacon meeting room, I guess, where we are now. So let's go up on top and, and go into the balcony. You want to? That sounds like fun. Let's look at this pretty picture. Huh, it says Houston. And that's funny because that's where he moved to was Houston, Texas. But whoever this person is, their name is Houston. And over here's another picture. Hey, put it on this real quick. <coughs> Hi, how are you? Hey, how are you? So this is the old building in which we're in, and then they built this new building. 
next to it. So that's interesting. So this is where he would have pastored. Okay, let's go check out the balcony. Okay, we didn't make it to the balcony yet, but this is where the organ is. Hmm. What do you think? I'm dying to play it, but I'd probably get kicked out. The pipes must be up inside there. So that's kind of cool. What a pretty place. Let's go check out the balcony. We're gonna go up there next. Okay, let's see how we get up there. Okay, Emma, we're behind, up above, and it's so dark you can't see. But on this side, this I guess would be the old baptistry, and I don't find any lights in here. But you can actually barely see the old stained glass window. And boy, is that beautiful. From the other side, you can't see it. But on this side, boy, is that beautiful. And it's a scene of Jesus, but uh, it looks kind of catholic -y. What a pretty stained glass window. wonder why you can't see it from the other side. And it's so dark in there, I don't want to go down in that little scary area, but interesting. Okay, let's go see what else we can find. Okay, so like many churches like this, the old building is too small. And they've grown and they only use the bigger building, so this old building Nobody uses. So we're walking around, we found the bathroom. Here's the sink. But it's nasty in there. Don't do it, don't show them the bathroom. Oh, it's gross. Look, all those, I don't know, bug poop and stuff. So they don't really use this anymore. I use the, the newer building. But let's go this way. Let's go filming. Come on this way. Oh, so many nooks and crannies. This is cool. Oh, and look at the damage. You get an old building like this, you get damage like that. And we're at the balcony. Oh, how cool is this? So here we go. This is the balcony. <clears throat> wow, I like it. I'd rather sit up here. This is the better view. Okay, so there must be the old pulpit or something laying down down there. Pretty big, isn't it? And you hear the echo, echo, echo. You'd have to be very, very quiet if you came here to church because they want to hear the preacher, but the echo is everywhere. All right, well, we'll try to do now, I guess, see what else we can see and then go to the new building and see if they have a library and see if they have any information. Um, when he went to Houston, he pastored a church in Houston in downtown on the corner of Ruskin Fannin. And that church building has since been uh, torn down. But they built a new one in the suburbs, and I went to that, and they had a picture of him on the wall with all the pastors of that church in Texas. And there was his picture in a bio. So I'm wondering if they'll have a picture in the new building of my third great grandfather. We'll see. All right, let's go. Okay, all right, so we're walking down this hall. What did you call this, the historical hall or something? It's our historical hall in, in Boyce Chapel. Historical hall, a lot of historical things here. And lo and behold, there's my third great grandfather. And they spelled his name wrong, but that's okay. They'll change it, they said. Jacob Manley Canty Breaker. And I guess you can see a little bit of the resemblance, only my beard's a little longer. But that's him. And then over here, this is the table where they met to talk about seceding from the Union right before the Civil War. This handsome marble tabletop played an important role in our nation's history. Um, when the sanctuary was completed in 1859, the table was part of the pulpit furniture used as a Lord's Supper. On this table, the Articles of Secession were written at the first meeting of the Secession Convention in December 17, 1860. And South Carolina was the first state to secede from the Union prior to the war between the states. Because the sanctuary was the largest in the city at the time, a seating capacity of 900, political meter leaders requested its use for their meeting. The original mahogany pulpit desk, one large pulpit chair, and small chair are still in use in the sanctuary. I'd like to see those too. Look at this beautiful old piece of furniture. And South Carolina seceded, and most people don't know why, it was over taxes, the moral tariff. They wanted to tax us 48% of our income. And we we're like, no, we don't want that. And unfortunately, we lost. But 
we have some freedom still today. So this is amazing. A couple, couple other neat things. That's the early pulpit Bible. So that would have been the Bible that sat on the pulpit. Um, there's some railway. Look, there's the communion bread plate. How about that? So we that's kind of Okay, so this is their huge monstrosity that's gigantic. Look down that hall. There's Sunday school classes everywhere. And this place is so big, you can literally get lost. And I think we just got lost in the First Baptist Church. So let's see if we can figure out how to get out. We went all the way up. Now we go all the way down. This goes on forever. Wow. Uh, Emma? How do we get out of here? See, when they get you in church, it's a jail. They don't ever let you go. You're like, I can't find my way out. I really like these old windows, though. They put chicken wire embedded in it so no one can break in. That's kind of cool. Are we there yet? So anyway, they didn't have anybody to open up the library, and they didn't have anybody to open up the bookstore. And they told us, come back after it's over. So we get to walk around for 45 minutes, I guess, and then wait for them to open it up. So, oh, thank you. That looks like the old pew that would have been there 150 years ago. Look at the old wood and how pretty it is. Once again, here's where they signed the Articles of Secession. Cool. Pretty piece of furniture. We're on, let's well, see, the pulpit would be there, facing this way. We're on this side of the church. This one would be old outside. Oh, cool. There probably would have been a stained glass window here. But look, that shows you what the... Come over here and face it that way. You can't get it all in, can you? So, but yeah, that's pretty cool. So it gives you an idea what the outside looked like. And look, here's some of the dead people. There's some people buried out here. I wonder if I could read it. It says, Thy gentle spirit, virtuous one, hath bid thee at thy friends a long farewell, and sought repose in heaven above, from heirs of earth where angels dwell. O glorious place, O blessed abode, where flesh and sin have no control, thou wilt be near and like thy God, enjoy the pleasures of the soul. Wow, isn't that beautiful? I wonder if any of our ancestors were right there. Let's go look around some more. Okay, we're in here again, and we found more stuff. Sunday school class of the deaf. Wonder when that would have been. 1922. All those people are deaf. And this was a Sunday school class. What does this say? Sunday school class of the deaf. Again, 1922. There's more pictures. Look at this. This is a historical document. This is really cool. Check this out, Emma. Secession notice, December 21st, 1860. The following resolutions were unanimously adopted by the City Council of Columbia in the order to be published in handbill form. And this is all we secede from the Union in 1860. November, right? November's when the elections are, so Lincoln would have been elected in November. And isn't that neat? Can you read that? And look at this. This is a newspaper from 1861, Emma. A newspaper from 1861, and look, get right in front of it where you can get it real good. This is where they all came. So this would have been when they seceded. This was when my third great grandfather was the pastor. And I wonder if they have him like right back up there or someplace. But that's what they would have dressed like and looked like, and that's when the secession took place. And he was the pastor. How cool is that, huh? Does that come out pretty good? Mm -hmm. There's always a glare on it, isn't there? Mm -hmm.
Okay. These are all people that are buried underneath the building because the place grew so big that they grew over where the dead bodies were. So all these people are buried underneath our feet. That's kind of creepy. Look, there's another one over here. All those people. Have a big day. Huh. Wow. Interesting. Hello. So they had some sort of a graduation service for their service today. And they said they couldn't open the library or the bookstore until after. So we drove around, looked around downtown, and then we came back. And now we're going to the bookstore. And look at this pretty hall. Really nice. So here it goes to the bookstore. We're in the church bookstore. Let's look around. This is their, their church bookstore. This is the book that I wanted. This is the First Baptist Church, the history of this church. So I'm sure my third great grandfather will be in this. Let's see. Breaker. Breaker. Page 125, 126. <laughs> they got his name wrong. It's Jacob Manley Canty. They put Carter there. That's twice. They must not have liked him too much. They spelled his name wrong. That's awful. Let's look at 125, see if they have a picture. Nope, no picture, but they're talking about it. So we'll get this book. And this is, I thought, a lot of different Bibles. But at least they do have a KJV. And there's a KJV, so I'm surprised. Good for that. Old Schofield, look at that. Huh, okay, so that's it. That's what we came for. We'll get this to go. So we made it. We're finally here. This is where my fourth great grandfather would have been. And here's a commemorative sign. And there's his name, Lewis Breaker. Woohoo! Finally found it. This would have been the 18 mile house, 18 miles from Charleston. And about a day's journey was 18 miles if you're in a horse and buggy. So you would start from Charleston and you get out here. And they had a tavern, a little hotel, and a lot of shop and a lot of people would have spent the night here before they journeyed farther into South Carolina and uh, there's a saying in our family that at one time George Washington spent the night here at the 18 mile house so that's quite interesting I don't know if that's true or not but the building no longer exists all that exists is what's left of what you see here this is cool Then he moved up to Camden, and we went up to Camden for a little bit and took a couple pictures in Camden. And then he moved to Key West, Florida. So what we've been doing is we've been looking for the father of, of Lewis Frederick, George Breaker, because I named our boy Conrad George Breaker after George, and we can't find anywhere George's grave. We've gone to three different churches that were the only churches here they would have gone to in the 1700s. And so George's grave must be lost can't find it. But it's quite exciting to be here where my ancestors once stood in the 1700s and that's quite exciting and to have the name on the plaque. Woo! That's kind of cool to be remembered. No man liveth to himself, no man dieth to himself. Incredible that you can remember someone after 200 and something years and still remember their name. So that's it. Awesome. the reason it's called the 18 mile house is because every mile they would put a stone marker so you have the one mile the 10 mile the 12 mile all the way along so the 18 mile and it was usually a stone and it said 18 mile and if someone said that they, there might be the stone here I'm not sure if this is it but there is a little stone right there and I wonder if that might have been it at one time look how it's all handmade but who knows, that might be too modern. But they said on the internet that they found the stone. But could that be the 18 mile marker? I don't know.
but it's a neat story if it is. So this was neat. Um, see if you can get that and they can read it and then come to the other side and see if they can read that if they want to. Okay, they can pause it to read it, so come in on the other side. And now look what's right next door, unfortunately. The Masons. Oh no! That's not good. But that's that's it. All right, that's what we came to see. I was walking away to the car, literally, and this was laying right there. This would have been on top of that. So this was some sort of a marker. You can see the cut stone right here. So somebody cut that. Five, six, seven, eight, 18, I don't know. But this is more modern because you got rebarb in it. But that's probably marking the 18 miles from the harbor of Charleston. So that's kind of neat to see. See the cut marks in this? So this is definitely more modern, but this is probably 100 years old. Looking at how old this looks, maybe 120. As you can tell what it's made out of. Cement and crushed up little pieces of oyster. Something they do here in the south. So that is definitely really old. Okay, thought I'd show that. We're out here in, where are we? Outside of Goose Creek, South Carolina, at the Chapel of Ease, one of the two churches that was here in the 1700s. And we're hoping to find my fifth great grandfather buried. You can see out here is the graveyard. And there's also supposed to be a church called the Chapel of Ease. So hopefully we can see the church, but also never knew where this place was thank god for the internet i can find this place and i'm hoping to find george breaker my fifth great grandfather so we'll find out come on with me all right we're already into some breakers and we just stepped in okay sacred to the memory of miss susan breaker widow of jacob breaker who departed this life in the town of camden south carolina and we just went to camden today 1839 age 63 years old. This would have been, Louis Frederick Breaker was my fourth great grandfather. This would have been his brother. So this would have been my, what, fourth great uncle. And then over here, sacred to the memory of John Jacob Breaker, Breaker departed this life in 1850. And uh, this right here is another Breaker. So B-R-E-A-K-E-R. -E well, let's find out where George would be. I hope he's here. Well, let's go see if we can find George. Cool, huh? We're losing lights, we gotta hurry. So, we've been all over here, looked at them all, and we can't find any other breakers. Um, the oldest ones I could find were 1797, way over there. Beautiful. So here's the breakers, but we had a scare as we were walking through here. A snake, at least four feet long. Went right in between you and me, right, Emma? It scared the snot out of you, the poor thing. So that was kind of creepy. But, oh well, we're alive. Thank you, Jesus. And I don't see a chapel out here, if there is. I've looked everywhere. All I see is the old cemetery. And the way these are facing makes me think the chip chapel might have been way over that way. But let's look at these real quick. So Susan Breaker, widow of Jacob Breaker, departed the life in 1837, 63 years old. 40 years a member of this church, which was the Chapel of East here. This stone designates the spot where with or where, where her flesh rests in hope. The inscriptions of her praise on earth are in the hearts of pious friends, friendship. The what is that word? The record of her works of faith in, is in the book of life. She left the world without one sigh. Um, something above in the sky. This was a member. Uh, oh, okay. This was put here by her 
surviving son, Charles Middleton Breaker, which would have been one of my other uncles, maybe third great uncle. And this was her husband, John Jacob Breaker, but he died at 24. This doesn't make sense. Maybe this would have been the son. Probably the son. And usually they're all buried together. Here would have been another son who died early. This usually a child's stone is small. But usually they always do them together, and I don't see where George would be. And this would have been where I'd hope to find the grave of George Breaker, my fifth great-grandpa, and I don't see it. So, okay, we have another chapel to go to and another cemetery, so we'll go check it out. Okay, so there's so many old, awesome historical sites in South Carolina. We're just driving down the road and this is Memorial Cemetery and Church. And this is the old church and the door was open. Let's go look inside. Wow, this looks old. Look how the brick is worn down for people coming here. Whoa, good, nasty. <laughs> kind of a balcony, but not really. Look how it's so rotten. But there's the stairs to the right to go up to the balcony. We're not using this. No, no, this is such an awful. I don't think we should do this. Huh, that's neat though. So I'm going to preach the gospel for the last time in this church because I don't think anyone else will come here. The Bible says that Christ died for our sins and was buried and rose again the third day according to the scripture. But friends, it's not just that he died. The question is, how did he die? He shed his blood. It's through the blood that we have forgiveness of sins and we're saved by the blood. And the Bible says, trust the blood of Christ. The Bible says in Romans 3.25, through faith in uh oh, that's not you. <laughs> through faith in his blood, it's through the blood of Jesus that you can find a way to heaven. Amen. So that's probably the last time this place will ever hear the gospel. What's back here? Uh more riding wood and a whole bunch of mud daubers and wasps. Let's get out of here. It is neat though. Could you imagine? In 1835, when this place was opened, imagine sitting here in the 1800s. There's a good echo in here, so when the preacher preached, you would have heard the echo. Neat. Okay. You see this right here? This is called sawtooth pattern. It's really pretty decorative. Oh, and these pillars. You know, I wish I knew when they were tearing this place down. I'd love to have some pillars like that. Be kind of cool. Oh, look, here's an old railing here. So the railing would have been on both sides. So the pulpit usually would have been right here. Back there where they would have sat. So the pulpit would have been right here. Huh, interesting. All right, let's get out of here. Okay, as we're driving to go where we want to go, we find this. There is so much history in South Carolina. And here's the sign that tells us about what this is, the Biggin Church Ruins. Uh, this is really a different county from where my ancestors lived, but it's just one county over, and that's just amazing. This would have been built in the 1700s. And this is what's left of an Anglican church in the 1700s. And here's somebody that died in 1834. So I saw this on the side of the road and I said, I gotta stop. Look how cool that is. Come on over here and look that way. Such rich history, South Carolina. There's just stuff everywhere to see. And um, you can tell we're in the South because look, Confederate flag, Confederate flag. How cool is that? guy would have been in the Civil War. So he was fighting in the Civil War. See this right here? Confederate States of America. 
that little metal piece right where's my finger right there that commemorates a Civil War veteran what an amazing thing but this isn't the place we wanted to see but this is kind of cool and we're heading out to the other graveyard but what a cool thing on the side of the road to stop and see wish we could metal detect that would be so fun huh okay Okay, we finally found St. James Goose Creek Church. I've been looking for this for 20 years. I could never find where it is. Finally, we found it. If it wasn't for the internet, we would never would have found it. But I'm hoping this is where some breakers are buried. This was built in the 1700s and uh, went through American Revolution, went through the Massey Indian War, went through the Civil War, and went through an earthquake. And it's still here. And this is where most likely my ancestors would have gone to church. I say most likely because you kind of have to connect the dots. We have a small cemetery, so we're going to try to find breakers, but so far, nothing. Let's go look around and see what we can see. These are very new. These aren't old at all. Breakers, we looked around and there are none there, so it's time to go. Pretty place though, so we're gone. Ready? Mm-hmm. 